podcast day. All right, let's tuck in. Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome. We lean in here, we get that morning glow. Mm. Hmm. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mars. You can find me as Hey Brownberry. <laughs> A lot of times I see podcasters starting uh, with their openings that are not what they will actually begin their podcast with. And I totally get it because I think I turn the camera to record and then turn it off record again probably three times before I get started. So third time's the charm. Hello and welcome to the Hey Brownberry Knitting Podcast. I'm Mars. You are very welcome here. Thanks for joining me today for this episode, which I have lovingly titled December Doings. The month is December 2018, and there are some things that I've been wanting to share with you that are specific to this month and will hopefully carry over into the new year of 2019. So I've got my cameraman, sound man, wardrobe, I think we're ready to go. Oh, and the director. Right. Uh, if you have not joined me before, I always give a little bit of a forewarning that my podcast is making centric, and other than that, it has no specific format. I typically sit down in front of the camera when I'm feeling like I'm bubbling over with things that I'd like to share with those of you out there in YouTube land, and that um, certainly applies to today. So. We're gonna dive right in as usual. I call this episode December Doings because in the last few years, I have noticed that a lot of my everyday doings tend to be things that have been going on for a long time, are just part of my day to day, and I've really been taking stock. Some of it feels like it's just passing me by and I'm not actively participating, uh, or at least not as much as I'd like to be. Maybe some of you can relate to that feeling. But in particular during this season, which is the holiday season, that's a really easy hole to slip into because there are things that we feel we should get done before the end of the year. There are all kinds of activities and events to get involved in, some by choice, some not so much. And I think there's just a, a bit of pressure to be doing very specific things during this time. So. I am trying year by year to pay more attention and to be more present. This December in particular, I have a few things that are helping me do that that are very specifically related to my making. One of the things is, of course, my knitting. And I have several things sort of related to, to knitting in particular for this month. Um, I am wearing a very recently, as of last night, finished object. This is my third Dustland hat, Dustland hat. Uh, it is a pattern by Stephen West from his West Knits book three. Uh, this pattern was designed and released quite some time ago. And the fact that it's my third should tell you a lot about how I feel about it. It's an excellent pattern. It's very textured and you will have seen it in my last episode as well. I made three uh, one of which was gifted to a friend. This second one is mine. And this third one is just going into my to be gifted um, stash of things. And the reason I like this pattern is for one, it's a, a worsted weight project. So the yarn is a bit heavier. It knits up fairly quickly. I've done one as quickly as, you know, within a single day of several spurts of knitting. Um, or over the course of two to three days uh, with a little less knitting each session. And it also really allows you the opportunity to experience both a yarn and the needles that you're using. The pattern is starts at the bottom and it is done with a two by two ribbed cuff. And then you have texture panels that are essentially made up of alternating knit and purl stitches. Uh, in different pairings all the way up to the crown decreases, which I think are really cool, by the way. The crown kind of finishes off in a garter ridge circle. 
and that allows you the chance to really explore knit and purl stitches in a particular yarn. Um, I found out by doing these three hats what I like in terms of a yarn needle combination. This latest one, for example, was done in a Knit Picks Wool of the Andes in a Briar Heather colorway, and Knit Picks Wool of the Andes is a yarn I've used many times before, so I wasn't experiencing it for the first time, but I worked with circular needles for the cast on, uh, double pointed needles for the crown decrease, uh, and circular needles for the body in between. And the types of needles I used were different as well. Metal needles for the ribbing, wooden needles for the body and the crown. And just feeling very comfortable with these simple textured patterns allowed me to focus on something else during the knitting, which was that I really like wooden needles. <laughs> I like the way that wooden needles work with uh, a toothier, more wooly yarn. And um, I really like using double pointed needles for smaller circumference like the crown decrease. So that's just my particular experience, but I think in general when you have a pattern that is fairly simple to execute, it gives you an opportunity to be present in other parts of the making. Uh, as usual, my project information will be in my Ravelry page. I'm Hey Brownberry on Ravelry. I typically put at least some notes for each project, so if you're curious about yarn, needles, and the pattern itself, that's a good place to find it. Okay, next up uh, on my needles. I have recently released a sock pattern called Pebbles and Pathways Socks, my very first original design, and it has been wonderfully received. Thank you to any of you out there who have purchased the pattern and to those of you who have started or finished knitting Pebbles and Pathways socks. When I was designing this pair of socks and knitting my own sample pair and going through the testing and editing process, I had no idea what joy was to come. Of course there was the joy of releasing the pattern and finding that people were excited about it and it was well received, thank you. But then to see people cast it on and I don't know about you, knitting time is precious time for me and probably for many of you too. So when I saw people not only purchase the pattern but actually grab yarn and needles and start knitting it, that was its own bliss, let me tell you. <laughs> it's something to see your idea expressed in different yarns by different people and for different reasons. Um, some folks are casting on for socks for themselves and being the holiday season, some people are planning to gift their Pebbles and Pathways socks. All of those things make me so happy and extremely grateful, so thank you for that. Um, I'll show you my second pair. This is in my Crudium Handmade project bag. Uh, celebrating Canada's 150th birthday. I am knitting my second pair of these socks in a new to me yarn. The, um, the yarn is Joseph and Annie by Abundant Earth Fiber. I'm looking in my project bag to see if I still have the label in here. I do. So the colorway is this beautiful tweedy light. Oh, let's try that again. There we go. You can just barely see the tweed. The Florida sun wants to come and join us today, of course. This yarn is quite a nice light cream color and the flecks of tweed within it are just barely visible in the skein, but they're very present in the knit. So here's my Pebbles and Pathways socks. And as you can see, it's a fairly straightforward pattern with some exciting details, some cables running up and down the edges with some twisted stitches and a garter stitch panel in the middle. Within the pattern, you'll find some choose your own adventure type elements. And 
if you do purchase it, you'll be able to discover how you can really make this sock your own. But I'm especially, again, enjoying the opportunity to be very present in this knit because of course the pattern is familiar to me, but it's my first time using these Addi Turbo needles in 2.75 millimeter, which is a bit larger than my standard sock knitting needles because this Joseph and Annie yarn is a sport weight. It's pretty dense, it's very bouncy, it has a lot of body to it, and 2.75 seems to be just about the right needle size for the fabric that I wanted. My blinds just here and I are playing light tricks to see who's gonna be the most tenacious, me or the sun. <laughs> Thanks for bearing with me. So uh, that is a Joseph and Annie yarn from Abundant Earth Fiber out on the west coast of the U.S. And it was gifted to me by my friend Jessica. Thank you, Jessica. Here's the label. And that cinnamon colorway is perfect. I actually have my infuser. I'm thinking, do I want to say diffuser? My aromatherapy diffuser is going and I've actually put in some natural bits. Some oranges sliced and cinnamon and ginger powder. Um, some beeswax and coconut oil. It's a bit of a simmer. It just basically heats up what's in its pot and spreads the aroma throughout the house, which I love. I got that idea from Lindsay of a wooden nest podcast. Hi Lindsay, if you're watching and it just makes the house smell amazing. So how do I get on that? Orange is orange scents, lovely scents, holiday smells, <laughs> it's all good. So if you're interested in knitting the Pebbles and Pathways socks, I particularly wanted to let you know that we have a knit along going using the hashtag Pebbles and Pathways, and it's an Instagram based knit, -al knit along, meaning um, if you're on Instagram and you use the hashtag, that will allow us to follow along with your project between now and the end of this month, which is December 31st in 2018. And there are some lovely prizes for that. You can uh, follow me on Instagram or check out my account to see the lovely yarny prizes that will be available for those of you who participate in the knit along. More nitty gritty. So again, with the holiday season, things get busy. A lot of us are on the move. I have more than one project on the go and I'm finding that's working very well for me because if I am running errands, um, we don't do a lot of big gift shopping in our family. We tend to prefer something um, just a little less hectic around this time of year. So there are times that I'm in the car and we're out and about. Um, we, may, we may in fact go and shop for something here and there and having a project that I can pick up and put down is key. And you guessed it, that's another pair of socks. These. I just, I just cast these on a couple nights ago. And in this case, the project itself was driven by the fact that I did want a vanilla sock on the needles so that I could have an easy portable project. But the bigger driver was trying out these nine inch circular needles from Knitter's Pride. I have used nine inch circular needles for socks before with some success. I was a bit frustrated by them in the beginning because I have like huge hands. <laughs> My fingers are very long and I found it very uncomfortable in the beginning to knit with nine inch circulars. I couldn't get a comfortable grip based on what I was used to in the past. Thankfully, I kept plugging away at it because I do like the meditative round and round of being able to knit um, most of a sock without much change in, in motion or action. So when I say this project was driven by the needles, I actually purchased them at a store not too far from me called Knit or Not. It's just north of me and I went in for the first time to visit that store the other day. So here's Mars from the past to give you a quick tiny tour of that yarn shop. I'm up in Jupiter and I'm gonna visit a yarn shop up here for the first time. It's called Knit or Not 
and I'm hoping to find a good spot for a friend that's going to be visiting in a few months. So I'm doing a bit of yarny reconnaissance work. Just want to check out the shop and see what things are nearby. Maybe there's a nice spot for us to eat um, before or after doing a yarn store visit. Let's go see. The staff in there was very, very nice. Um, there is definitely an older population of knitters that frequent the store, and that's not to say anything negative about them. It just happens to be their clientele. But they did not treat me in any way um, that was unwelcome. I actually would like to go back and spend some time there, maybe at one of their, they're not official knit nights, but at a gathering that they typically have on a day of the week when they're open a little later. So my plan is to go back and these needles that I purchased there are working out great. I've had much more success with these and I think it's because they are, for one, wood. I believe this is bamboo. And the needle portion of the needle versus the join or the cable is longer than needles I've used in the past of a nine inch length. And that makes all the difference for me in how I'm able to hold the needles, which essentially um, everyone is going to have their own style of grip. You can see that I tend to put a lot of fingers on the project itself and on the needles, but really what makes the difference is that I can relax my hands and feel like I still have good control over most of what's happening. So being able to flick my yarn around the needle while I'm still holding the stitches I just created and loosely advance the stitches on, from the left side. I'll show you a close-up here of knitting on this sock with these needles. So the project itself is going fairly well. I do have one gripe. This is my first time using this Lang Wool. It is a self-striping yarn and I purchased it while on a trip. I had not used it before and was actually surprised to find that inside the skein there was a spool of nylon thread, which I assume is intended to carry along with the yarn at the heel of the sock. Um, I am thinking about doing that, but I was really frustrated with this particular skein because out of the center, which is where I'm pulling my working yarn, came yards and yards of yarn barf. I'm not even going to pull this any further out because I've had two instances of having to untangle a holy mess of yarn. Is it too much to ask that the yarn just pull out of the ball? and we all carry on. <laughs> anyway, knitter's problems. It worked out. I spent a goodly amount of time untangling last night and my biggest <laughs> whinge and complaint was that's time I could have actually been knitting. Uh, but I made it through and I'm glad because the striping is very pleasing. Very quick tangent I wanted to share with you guys because I'm staring at it here. Winter in South Florida where I live is citrus season. This is when our citrus plants tend to do really well and we have in our yard an orange tree and a Myers lemon tree. I just cut a little slice of this uh, orange for you. These are delicious. They're not very big. They actually come in about this size 
and you're saying, Mars, that is a funny looking green thing, right? A lot of oranges, especially these juicing kind of oranges that we grow here, don't actually turn orange on the tree even when they're ripe like this one. We don't use any kind of herbicides or pesticides in our yard, so I consider this to be uh, organic by my measure. And we know that they're ready, sometimes by them falling off the tree, um, or by their size, and a little bit by their squish. So inside is typically very orange, very sweet and delicious, but outside stays green. Fun fact, um, some oranges are sprayed to turn orange. <laughs> or they are genetically modified and grown in a specific way to get that orange skin color. To each his own, right? And we also have a delicious Myers lemons. Um, Myers lemons in particular can get very big. Uh, we've had some on our tree as big as my fist and um, they're quite juicy. And they are, I would say, pretty moderate in terms of tartness. They can be eaten at least if you have a tolerance for sour taste, they can be eaten as is, um, as in you could slice it and, and eat a slice. They're really good in just some cold water, slice them up and put them in cold water and then you can eat them after. And the flavor infuses into the water, which is delicious. So that's a fun part of living in a place that doesn't get snow and doesn't have a fireplace, but you know, we have fruit in December. <laughs> Giving is a big December theme. I have been posting, pardon me, orange pulp. I'll admit I took a little bite of that slice while I was on break there for a second. <laughs> um, December and giving kind of go together. There are several holidays sub celebrated in this month, and many of you might be feverishly gift knitting right now. Um, so I again, in my theme of staying present, wanted a, a charitable opportunity to give. And the short of it is I decided to put together a box of items for a, sh a local shelter. And my plan for the month is to put in one item or a type of item each day that I think would be useful to, to anyone, men, women, children, anyone using the services of the shelter. And um, the combination of things I'm including and have included are things that I have here around the house, you know, things that I think are, are in good shape or brand new, um, things that I've made, and I may purchase a few things as well. It has honestly been a great morning ritual so far. I post on my Instagram stories each morning the item that I'm including in the box, not to show off like, oh, I'm so charitable, but really, honestly, it has sparked some great conversation about giving around this time of year, as well as excellent ideas from those on Instagram who send me messages um, and say, oh, I've done something like this, or I'd like to, and some good things to include might be. And I have the box here. I'm using one of those linen boxes that you can get from a home goods store that has a lid, uh, it assembles really easily. And I particularly picked this box, I had it in the house, I picked this box because it's reusable. And I'm hoping that either the box will be given to someone at the shelter or an employee of the shelter may be able to use it again. So hopefully the box itself will be useful to someone. And inside I've included just a variety of things, some tea, um, crayons, kids or adults, uh, soap, some sunscreen and lip balm, uh, shampoo and conditioner. I get so many of these when traveling from hotels. On the handmade perspective, I tried out a new pattern to me, and this is a washcloth. It's done in a crochet textured stitch, which is based primarily on a front post double crochet texture pattern. This pattern was done as a Warm Up America square and Warm Up America was an effort to make blanket squares um, to serve those in need. And I recorded a little video about this crochet project because crochet does not appear very often on this podcast. So I'll share that video with you now.
doing a little crochet today. Switching to one of my other crafts that I enjoy. And I'm just going to show you a few stitches on this project, which by the time you see this episode may already have been put away in a charity box that I'm putting together this month. I'm creating a washcloth, a highly textured washcloth, using a free pattern that I found on Ravelry just by searching for worsted weight crochet washcloths um, that use less than 200 yards of yarn. This is a pattern that was used as part of the Warm Up America uh, charity effort, which I think that's been going on for quite some time. So it's the WUA Textured Square. And this is not meant to be a tutorial, it's just sharing one of my projects. But essentially this is a texture created by alternating front post double crochet stitches, these raised bars that you see here that look like little posts standing up in the pattern and some alternating chains and single crochet all those terms i'm using are the u.s crochet terms and the pattern calls for an h hook this is one of my favorite crochet hooks it's made out of guancalo wood um, it is a size five millimeter or an h hook it's from Bee Queen Collection, in case you're interested. So I'm gonna do a few of the pattern stitches. This is a free pattern, that's why I feel comfortable um, sharing this view of it with you. So I'll describe what I'm doing and maybe just put a bit of the pattern information, but on this particular row, the pattern is essentially a repeat of two rows. And on this row, you're doing single crochet and chains all the way across. So the repeat calls for you to chain two and then do a single crochet in the next front post double crochet, which I know to be this stitch. And then, oh, my yarn is a little bit splitty. By the way, this is Blue Sky Alpaca dyed cotton. It's 100% organic cotton. It says it's about a worsted weight. It's pretty heavy for a worsted, maybe an Aran. Um, so yeah, I repeated that all the way across. Chain two. I'm a little clumsy with this because I'm actually behind the camera on my tripod. And then a single crochet in the next front post double crochet stitch. Again, this is not a tutorial. <laughs> I just, I'm sharing some of this with you all because I thought might be interesting to see. And then I'll pause here and then show you some of what's done on the second row of the pattern repeat. Just before I move on, I'll show you guys my very sophisticated tracking system. I need to do a total of 24 rows and I like to make little circles and color them in. So I just did three rows of eight circles and I color them in as I complete each one. I know, it's, it's high tech, it's high tech stuff. I don't do a lot of crochet, but I do enjoy it. I have made two cozy, I'm sorry, I've made two granny stripe crochet blankets, um, which primarily consisted of the same stitch repeated over and over again in rows. And the interest comes from changing colors, using up scraps, um, and having some nice multicolored stripes within the blanket. I enjoy the textural aspect of crochet. Separate from knitting, I feel like this is more a building block style of creating texture. So stitches are kind of built on top of one another or you know, built out of a stitch in the row below. Uh, and I find that very interesting. I think crochet is appropriate for my tastes. It's appropriate for certain things like blankets and washcloths. I know that there are people out there who uh, certainly make garments and um, I've seen some beautiful crochet shawls and um, all kinds of things, even socks. So I know that the, the craft itself has a broad array of things that you can make, um, but I personally use it for very specific things, particularly things that I think can really um, 
benefit from structure. I used to make crochet beanies pretty often because I thought they fit really well. It was very easy to get the sizing right. You know, when you're basing it on a chain, you can start a crochet hat, for example, from the top or from the bottom, but you can predetermine the sizing. So just sharing with you a few stitches of this part of the repeat, this is done as, um, I'll just finish off this latter part of the stitch repeat here. So this is done as two double crochet in the next chain two space, which is this here, a space created from the chain two of the previous row, and then a front post double crochet in the next single crochet, which is here. Um, with this large, <laughs> with this heavyweight yarn and these very obvious stitches, it's pretty easy to read my crochet. Again, speaking as someone who's done it several times before, um, as with anything, a beginner would need some time and some practice to be able to recognize stitches and spaces and so on, but once you do, then it makes a repeatable pattern like this pretty easy to execute. And creating that front post double crochet, if you look back over my other stitches, you can see where that stitch being done towards the front of the work creates great texture. So I'll be adding this to my Advent Charity Box. I call it my Advent Charity Box because I'm adding uh, an item to it each day. And I'll, I will either have already spoken about or We'll soon speak about that um, in the episode. So I hope you enjoyed that. If you also love to crochet and have some textural patterns or other types of patterns I should check out, let me know below in the comments. That square was very easy to make and I would consider myself to be uh, an intermediate crocheter. Honestly, if you were willing to learn a few stitches, you could get through it quite easily, I believe. With YouTube nowadays, you can look up a particular stitch and follow along and this one is so repetitive that it would be it would be worth it my husband loved the texture and so it's possible I'll be making some washcloths for our family as well using that cotton all right let's talk about some other December doings I decided to take on a challenge for December that was posted by the 1764 shepherdess um, she is of the spin 15 a day fame. Spin 15 minutes a day is the intention, which is really about, again, being present in a practice, embracing ritual. And if you give yourself about 15 minutes per day with your spinning over time, that cumulatively gives you a lot of awesome hand spun yarn. <laughs> and I thought the December challenge was particularly appealing because the idea is for you to spin a heavier weight yarn, something like a, a DK, maybe a light worsted, and then to use that hand spun to make a pair of fingerless mitts from a pattern design um, that was that's posted, a free Ravelry pattern that's posted by Melissa, who is the spicy homemaker. I will include information about the spin 15 a day December challenge in my show notes below, along with information about other things I talk about. Uh, as I said, I took on this challenge because I am a spindle spinner. I use spindles. Uh, I don't own a wheel. And DK weight yarn on a spindle for a small, useful project like fingerless mitts is very appealing to me. So this is my second bit of hand spun on this spindle. I actually started this second bit after um, taking off my first hand spun and putting it onto the Nitty Naughty and just giving that some time to rest. Um, here's the original fiber. It's a merino that was gifted to me by Maria Ninja Chickens. So many beautiful colors in there. Obviously it's primarily blue and so that's how it shows up in the yarn as a blue with a lot of colorful details. Let's see if I can get you a good view of that. All of the little streaks of color that you see here 
because of the way I'm drafting this fiber, they're represented in the yarn in different places. I'm really enjoying it. I don't mind spinning merino. I'm a very beginning spinner, but this has been a smooth process so far. Touch wood. <laughs> I had, as I said, a first portion of yarn. Now I know this looks like a tangled mess, but it's not. <laughs> it's actually a skein. Um, and I don't want to pull on it too much because that energy that you see in there with all of the twist is going to be very useful to me when I make this into a two ply. So I will take this amount and another amount and ply them together for a nice two ply yarn in order to make my mitts. I'm really excited about that, mostly because it feels achievable within a month from beginning to end. And even if I don't finish, it's a great challenge and it's given me the practice of picking up my spindle each day. And with my intent for December to be a very low stress month, a making filled month, this was a nice spin along to, um, to join up with. So if that's something you're interested in, today is December 10th. So that gives you three weeks to participate if you hadn't heard of it before now. Some of my joy this month is coming from lovely gifts from friends. In my last episode, I talked about the what I'm calling the MNM Advent Swap. That's Maria, Natalie, and Mars. We are just three friends who've decided to gift each other some goodies, and we open them daily throughout the month. Uh, each person made 12 gifts for one of the other two, and so. Pretty much every morning, we're messaging each other back and forth on Instagram about what amazing things we've received for the day. I don't show those items daily. Uh, my intent is not to flood the internet with that. I'd rather flood the internet with the gratitude I feel for two amazing women who've been such a big part of my hygge this month. <laughs> Um, but I think I'll share with you a few things because not only do they represent my joy in this swap, but they're another part of my December doings, which is planning for the next year. Many of you are probably in that same mindset, thinking about what you want your 2019 to look like. Um, I've been journaling a bit and also thinking about my word for next year. And I'll share with you my word for 2019, meaning a word that I would like to hold on to and use as somewhat of a, a pleasant box to keep things in and to bring me back to uh, a centered place. That word is ritual. And my experience with ritual is really one that feels very open. Um, I think many things can be considered a ritual and I'm looking at it as a repeated practice and specifically one that brings good feelings, calm feelings, and that kind of fosters energy, especially for creativity, for my work, and for my family life. So I'm going to be creating rituals for myself that I think are healthy, and I'm also going to be examining things that maybe I've been doing a bit less consciously, but still repeatedly and examine them to see whether or not they are good rituals that I should nurture. Making is absolutely going to be part of that. That's why you're here. I'm a maker and most likely so are you. And my Advent Swap partners have completely enabled me for 2019 rituals. I am so grateful. They are so clever and creative. I'll share a couple things with you. Maria gifted me this set of ochre pigments. There are eight little jars in there of ochre. So literally some colored powder from, the, I mean, that have come from the ground. Natural powdered colors in these gorgeous shades that she knows I love. Oh, let's see. Sorry, guys. 
Try to see if I can get them a little closer. You know, with glass, it's going to be hard to see. This one is a beautiful brownish red. Um, there are a few different shades of kind of yellow beige. And then even some darker brown and some olive green. Um, Maria found these while she was on a trip this summer, which I adore making related souvenirs. And the most wonderful thing about this is these pigments can be made into watercolor paints, acrylic paints, oil paints, um, a method called a tempera, patina, wax, and you can also use them for whitewash, ceramic and glaze, stucco, and on marble. Just by adding different elements to each of these, I can turn it into a painting experience um, of a completely different type each time. I mean, this is a year or more's worth of activity, for sure. And the ritual of using color in different ways is one I fully embrace already, and now this is just another format in which I can do that. Thank you, Maria. Sewing. Any of you stitchers out there, needle and thread? of the needle and thread ilk. One of my beautiful gifts from Natalie was this super cool mug rug kit. Everything I need besides the sewing machine is in here. These gorgeous printed fabrics, some bias tape for my border, some really cool batting, and some other fabric in the back here. I can't see because I've put the wrapping inside. I, I keep everything. And these colored papers contain instructions, step-by-step -step instructions for two different types of mug rugs. When your friends know you and they gift towards your potential, it is an amazing thing. Makers, I encourage you to make for other makers because the appreciation of someone who also loves that craft or loves craft and creativity, I think the appreciation level is out of this world. This is something that I have put into a box and it's part of my 2019 plans to do more sewing. I've decided to be much more structured and create a ritual around sewing. So I put together a box Excuse my reaching here of sewing projects most of them are packaged up like this I've gone and picked out in some cases fabrics that I haven't touched in a long time like this Ankara fabric from urban stacks I find whatever packaging I can around the house that's reusable and I put in a note to myself about what I would like to make with that fabric in this case a v-neck tank top, possibly with the high-low style with a higher front and a lower back. I mean, this fabric is inspiring all on its own. And I spent the time thinking about how best I would like to use it. I thought about a project bag, a wall hanging, but I think a tank top in a style that fits me well is something that will get a lot of use. So I packaged it up with that note so that when I am looking through my box in 2019, each month I will pull out a project like that to work on. In this case, I refashioned a sundress that was handed down to one of my girls that didn't fit anymore. I cut out usable pieces from large sizes down to small. And then I wrote out some of the things I intend to do with the different sizes of those pieces of fabric and it goes in the box and one month this will be my sewing project so you get the idea in some cases I'm gonna try following a paper pattern I've not really done that by myself yet so I chose a bag pattern that I've had in my stash forever and it has four different bag styles none of which I've ever made from a pattern before but I'm gonna struggle through it because Again, I find this to be something useful, and I know that the skills of creating handles, inserting a zipper, making different bag bottom shapes are going to be things I can use from then on. So that will be one month in my sewing project box. I know that monthly is a much more attainable goal for me when it comes to projects of that size. Sometimes most of the project will be 
psyching myself up to do it and <laughs> getting up the confidence and laying out the pieces. Sewing for me feels like a, a more, a slower process and you have to be more purposeful about some of the parts before you get to the gratification of the finished project. And I'm okay with that. I think that fits very well into my goals for ritual behaviors. Um, but I also have to allow for the bit of discouragement that can come from being a beginner and the time that it takes to do things properly when you're not an expert. So that's why I'm giving myself a month to do these projects. I'm also, from now, trying to line some of them up in the order of what I think is their difficulty level, starting with something very easy, putting a patch over top of an existing sewn item, um, out to something more complicated, like a garment piece where sizing and other things will be important. And by doing that, I feel that my progress will show in approaching a project that has a few more new skills or techniques and feeling more confident because of the projects that I've done before. I hope that makes sense. So those things will be in my project box for 2019. Um, and then I have a few things that are future projects. This was also in my advent calendar gifts from Natalie. And I've got it... I've got it stored in some gorgeous coloring paper that she sent me, which, again, speaking of rituals, um, sitting down and coloring as an adult is probably something not all of us would do and may not be into. I am, I'm into it. <laughs> Natalie knows that. It's just a, f um, I say forced, but in a good way. It is a purposeful way to spend your time to sit down and color or create an image and I just turn this into a bit of an envelope by stapling the sides to hold these ceramic buttons. Butterflies are some of my favorite images, insects, <laughs> and Natalie has handcrafted these butterfly stamped ceramic buttons. I adore them. I'm storing them in my sewing box because I would like to use this pair as sort of toggles, uh, toggle closure for a bag that I intend to sew. And then I would love to use these on a knit cardigan for myself, a really nice long sleeve, um, comfortable cardigan that would be possibly a shallow v-neck and then something that would button all the way down or a knit shawl of great size that could benefit from being buttoned up um, with several of those beautiful butterflies. I've written down those ideas and put those in this envelope with the buttons so that it can go in my project box. I don't know what Mars of August 2019 will be thinking about and doing. So Mars of December 2018 is trying to help a sister out. <laughs> I am making these notes so that I don't have to beat my head against the wall trying to come up with ideas. Um, I have the ideas, I put them in here, and then when it comes time to work on these things, I think there would be much more freedom in that. Friends, that's about all I have to share with you this time around. I am alone in the house and that means it's time to put on a pot of coffee and do some knitting. I'm so glad you are here to join me and talk about my December doings. Please reach out, comment below what you're doing this month and going into the new year. I love connecting with you. That's why I get behind this camera. I look forward to connecting with some of you on Instagram as well and maybe by way of our sock knit along or if you're participating in the spinning knit along either way I'd love to touch base with you out on the social medias come back again another time and i'll see you then bye <laughs>